let's talk about the white snake. What happened to the white snake? Well, guess what? Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. We're jumping right into it. Remember that crazy clutch that I cut the other day that had all kinds of weird animals I couldn't quite figure it out? It had a white snake in it. It was a spider female that was bred to a bamboo silver streak walma. Well, let me tell you what ended up happening in this. First off, I can tell you that we did hit a couple silver streak bamboo, what appeared to be walma ball python. So kind of exactly what the dad was uh, without any influence from the mom, if that that makes any sense and then we kind of hit one of these which I think is a little bit different I actually think this is also a silver streak bamboo but I think it's actually a spider and not a woma just because it's a little bit different looking a little bit different expression and then we ended up hitting just a bumblebee which is understandable seeing that the silver streak is a pastel and of course the female is a spider now this is one that kind of came out that kind of has me a little bit confused because to be honest with you this is definitely a bamboo and I think it's a woma but it appears to be something else. This is one of the animals I was like, what is that in the egg? Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There's a chance that it could actually have been fathered by another bamboo because we had two males in there and maybe the rest of the clutch was fathered by the Silver Streak Bamboo Walma and this one was actually by the Pastel Vanilla Pinstripe Bamboo. I know that sounds weird. Regardless, I have a feeling that this has vanilla in it and I think it also has spider and maybe pinstripe and bamboo. Not 100% sure, but let's talk about the white snake. What happened to the white snake? Well, guess what? The white snake didn't make it out of the egg, unfortunately, and I have a theory on this. Super spiders are actually typically lethal and although I've never produced a white snake from any of my spiders in the past I have a feeling that's what happened I have a feeling that whatever combination we ended up hitting a super spider which is a little bit confusing me because there shouldn't have been any spider on the male side but I can't really explain any other way to say that there was a white snake and it probably was a super spider because super spiders are lethal and they actually are white snakes that don't actually live once they hatch but I'm not 100% sure if that's the best explanation I have regardless the rest of the clutch came out looks pretty awesome remember Ben and Jerry just shed out not too long ago so we're gonna see if both heads will eat again because the last time only one head ate whoa come on Ben you're a crazy monkey there's Ben let's see if Jerry will eat that guy's a maniac today here you go Jerry you want to eat Jerry Again, it doesn't look like Jerry's interested in food. Uh, ben is definitely a monster as always, and this is how it used to be, but then Ben and Jerry both were eating, so I'm not really sure. Since the injury, Jerry still won't eat. It's kind of a little bit of a bummer. It does concern me a little bit, but again, the fact that they're eating, I guess, means I shouldn't be that concerned. I'll go ahead and give Ben another couple of rodents, and uh, hopefully they share a stomach. We do have to get that checked out sometime. Just taking a quick look and see what kind of colubrids hatch out really quickly, because it's that time of year, and ooh, look at this clutch right here. Oh my gosh. These are actually scaleless creamsicle corn snakes. Of course, we produce scaleless albino corn snakes a bunch, but these scaleless creamsicles just have that much more orange sherbet looks to them. I tell you what, these guys are absolutely incredible. And it looks like they're just starting to shed too. So once they're actually out of shed, oh my God, those things are going to be absolutely adorable. Another little corn snake clutch that we actually already took out of its egg box, kind of set it up a little bit too. And look at this really cool scaleless corn snake here. There's just a few babies in this clutch and the scaleless corn snake is certainly the kind of cream of the crop when it comes to these things but wow that's so cool and I've said it before that's what's neat about scaleless rat snakes and corn snakes that everyone is completely different from the last absolutely incredible leopard looking pattern on this one real quick clutch of ball pythons to pool right here and look at this amazing girl here this is actually a chocolate pinstripe and she's bred to that elusive banana chocolate spinner meaning we could potentially get a super chocolate banana spinner pinstripe stripe whatever the case is we have been searching for it for like two years we have a bunch of clutches this year so I tell it last year I completely whiffed I am hoping this year will be a different result looks like this is another beautiful clutch I'm just trying to get this girl to let me have her eggs it's okay sweetheart I'm gonna take care of your eggs I promise you there you go what a beautiful snake though huh Wow, she is absolutely gorgeous. We'll just gently take her off and look at these eggs right here. Ooh, I tell you what, these are really nice. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get these in an egg box really quick. Gonna be a little challenge because I'm gonna have to take these top eggs off, but it looks like they're pretty dried on there. And once they dry really heavily, it's a little hard to get them apart. But regardless, we've got two 
four, six, eight good eggs. I tell you what, that is good. We've got to have 35 or 40 eggs, something like that from the chocolate stuff that could potentially produce the super chocolate banana and potentially the camos and stuff like that. So fingers crossed this year, we hit our odds. Pretty exciting. We got some new babies hatching. Yay. So these are the first gargoyles of the year? Uh, no. We oh, got really? a few other ones hatch out. Oh, Maybe well, we I... didn't highlight them. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't even see them. So I didn't know. These are the first for me anyway. So what do we got here? Well, this is one of Elvira's. Oh my gosh, it's yeah. so pretty. It's already got a lot of nice orange. It'll probably turn red there. They're absolutely adorable. I mean, gargoyles are a big part of our future here for sure. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool to see them. Look, I love the striping on that one. What else They're we got? They're all stripes. So They're they look stripes? pretty similar. Oh, okay. Oh, look that at one's it, a little though. darker. It's okay. got a little more prominent striping. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's awesome. Really cool. And now are these all from the same one? Well, this one's Two also are. from Elvira. That one's from Elvira. This was Elvira and us from too. So it was red stripe to a black and white stripe. Okay, gotcha. This is probably out of Bloody Mary, just because it's oh, okay. a stripe. It's got a cool little tail pattern. Yeah, too. this it's one's like... got a little more color on it. Yeah. She's more orange. And is this the one that only lays one good egg typically? No, this is actually uh, one of yours, Wednesday. There you go. Some gargoyles, and we have some killers coming up for this next breeding season, too. So uh, plenty more to hatch, we but it's always. I like some of them sometimes. That's a good idea. So there you go, baby gargoyles. I had showed you guys before that the Emerald Tree Bow was having a little bit of problem with stuck shag, which is really weird because she has so much mid in here, and she's never had that issue before. And I showed you that technique of actually not putting in water to soak but actually put in damp paper towel well guess what she shed out and looks absolutely gorgeous today it is so nice to see her completely shed out what an absolutely gorgeous animal i tell you what and if you remember this is an animal that gave me a little bit of a problem a few months ago gave her some medicine and she is just crushing it now and doing really well what an absolute ripper this ball python clutch is actually a normal female that is bred to a super enchi pinstripe just meaning that everything's going to be enchi some could be enchi pins and so on like that so there's a whole bunch of potential. Everything though will be entry. It looks like an absolutely gorgeous clutch of eggs right here. Good job, Bob. Oop, we had one egg fall out over here. This egg almost did. So we'll go ahead, we'll candle this egg. We'll get it in an egg box really quick. And then we'll take the rest of these eggs out, kind of readjust them a little bit inside the egg box to be really good. But we should be good to go. Again, this is the only egg I have to candle. There's two, four, six, eight, nine good eggs. <laughs> Tell you what, the good eggs just to keep on coming. And again, because it's a super entry, it means everything Everything in the clutch is gonna be entry and then some are gonna be pinstriped on and on and on. Regardless, couldn't be more happy with that. Only a couple more clutches go and we are done for the year with ball python. We actually had another spotted python clutch hatch. We only have a couple more clutches of Antracia left to hatch. I tell you what, we had a really good year on these guys. And look at these little worms here. I tell you what, they are absolutely incredible. But there is something in here, uh, like Sesame Street would say, one of these things is not like the other. Or whatever they said in Sesame Street. And it's that little dude right here. Look at that. That is a little granite spotted python. That is a recessive trait. Now what's interesting about this particular one is that we didn't breed this breeding for granite or this kind of really reduced patterned animal. It just kind of popped out. And what's weird is you can see there's gotta be a dozen spotted pythons in this clutch and there's only one of these granite animals, which is really interesting. I'm not really sure how to explain it. I can't say that it spontaneously popped up because we do work with granites too. So maybe there was a possible head in there, but what's weird is if it was a possible head, you'd think a quarter of the babies would turn out granite and only one out of 12 we might have just not hit the odds but nevertheless just a couple more clutches of antrace which are the children's spotted or stimson's pythons and then we are done for the year but i tell you it was a banger year when it came to those guys i've never produced anywhere near the number we did this year but uh super excited to have this surprise granite spotted python all right guys i got my first tour in the house today how are you guys doing and your name was eric, eric. and Teresa. Teresa. and you guys came from atlanta atlanta all right well we're gonna have a great time just showing around we're gonna have fun they're gonna be with us the entire weekend so we're gonna have a good time let's jump into it a quick mail time mail time mail time we have all kinds of goodies that you guys sent us. So uh, where should we start? Start right here? Yes. Okay, good. This is from, let's see, we have someone from uh, April, Nick, Landon, and Olivia. And these guys are from, where are they from? They're from? McFairland Pheasants Incorporated. All right, in Wisconsin. This Our family is, shoes oh. fans wanted to send you a little something to feed your reptiles. Oh, interesting. My name is April. I actually work at a pheasant farm. 
in Wisconsin recently started selling edible eggs and thought you reptiles would oh. like to give it a try. So awesome. <laughs> so take a look, guys. We actually have uh, a bunch of little pheasant eggs. It looks They're like really little cool. like uh, pool balls, but oh my I gosh. guess that's not what it is. Ooh. And these were actually set with a yeah. cool pack, so they're, they're actually still cold. cold. We could probably eat these. I was huh? just gonna say, could we eat them too? Okay, so we'll feed a few to the reptiles and we'll eat Maybe some. Maybe I'll make an omelet tomorrow. Know. Yeah, <laughs> a pheasant omelet. So thank you guys, that's absolutely awesome. This one actually comes from Australia. Oh, All right, oh this is wait, from okay. Emily. Actually, yes. This yes. looks like it might be goodies for Noah. Oh, okay. To do. You know, everyone always sends goodies to Noah. Well, but what about does, us? Well, he does the moop bangs, and we usually eat with him, so. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to see if this is going to be different than the other Australia. Yeah, because we get. We uh, oh yeah, these are tons of uh, tons of. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> tons of goodies from Australia. We got tiny teddies and. Oh my goodness! Uh, All right. Well, oh, I remember eating these when I was in Australia. Oh, I really like these. Wait a second, we did try some of this stuff, so. Oh my God, there's all kinds of good stuff. So, okay, if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to Noah, uh, Bad Choice Noah, and we'll be tasting a bunch of Australian stuff. I think we have a we have a lot of stuff to taste over on when his channel. When he gets back from his trip, we've got a lot of filming. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna be- Eating snacks. <laughs> yeah, we're probably gonna gain like 25 pounds. Hoo hoo doggy. Oh my gosh, this is a beautiful clutch right here. Look at this right here. This is actually an Amel Motley scaleless corn snake. Absolutely incredible. I mean, what colors on this? But look at this one right here. Oh my gosh. This is actually a aneurythristic diffused scaleless corn right there. Hoo hoo, that thing is beautiful. Wow, look at the pattern and color on that little monkey right there. These guys are incredible. And then look at this right here. Wow! Of course, that is an annuary scaleless without the diffused gene on it. Oh my gosh, they are unbelievably incredible. And where are you going over there, little buddy? Come on over here. Wow, that clutch hatched out and had some rippers in it. If you like this video, here's another video you might want to check out. Also, a playlist with similar videos too. And make sure you go over here and hit that subscribe button. I love your beautiful faces. Be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.